Hey everyone, today I thought that I would answer some viewer questions while I was cooking. The kids are coming over tonight, it's Halloween night, and we are going to have dinner and watch a scary movie, probably Beetlejuice, and I get that that's not the scariest movie in the world. However, the kids haven't seen it, I haven't seen it since, well, forever, and it'll be fun. We have kind of a tradition of watching a scary movie on Halloween, so that's what we're going to do, and I figured I might as well answer some viewer questions while I was doing that. I am making Thai coconut curry soup, and it's made with uh, carrots and sweet potato, and it's quite yummy and easy to make, especially in the Instant Pot. Right now I am sauteing some onions. I love that thing. It's so super easy to use. So first I'm going to grab the carrots. And the cutting board. All right, the first question I have from a viewer is, how do I entertain in a small space? Do I find it a challenge? What do I do? I don't find it a challenge. I mean, obviously you have to do things differently when you're entertaining in a small space. I can't do the same things that I did when I, when I had my condo because I don't have a dining room per se. And there I had not only an eating bar at the kitchen, a kitchen table with four chairs, and then a dining room table. All this in just under 1,200 square feet. Totally wasted space. So I don't have that here. So yes, I have to do things a little differently, but that doesn't mean it's worse. It just means it's different. Now, I'm not going to have big dinner parties for, you know, six, eight people. But to be honest, I didn't have those before either. So there's no difference. In October, when the kids came over for Thanksgiving dinner, all I did was I have a folding table, plastic table that, that actually folds up like a suitcase. And I set it up in my living room where my little coffee table is. And the coffee table is actually a bench. So that became a bench on one side. I have the ottoman on the other side and then the couch on the other side. And so, that was really super easy. I'll insert a picture of, of how it looks. Not fancy, but gave us plenty of room to eat and then play board games after, which was really nice. So I don't really find it a challenge to entertain in here. I've had friends in here for just a visit and some wine. We grabbed what we wanted and we sat down on the, the couch, the ottoman. Um, I have this two stools. So it really wasn't a problem. It's just different. And I think that that's probably the key when you're moving into a space this small is be willing to just adapt your normal routines into a new normal routine. It's not worse. It's just different. Um, and people love coming over to a tiny house. I guarantee you, if you build a tiny house, everyone will <laughs> suddenly everyone will want to come visit you, which is awesome. In the summertime, of course, we sit outside. Other times when the kids, either individually or together, come over to visit and we have dinner, we just take our plates and sit down on the couch and then watch a movie or something like that. Right now, actually, we're watching a series, Broadchurch, really good if you haven't watched it. Entertaining in a tiny space just requires adaption and it's not worse, it's just different. Second question, how big is my tiny house? I have answered that question in uh, some other videos, but for those of you who just want to know, the house is 37 feet long from the back window to the front of the gooseneck and nine and a half feet wide. That did require a custom built trailer. For me, that extra foot of width makes all the difference. It allows me to have this kitchen um, and the office space behind me, all that storage that's along this side and a bigger bedroom. It made sense because this is my full-time home and because I'm not taking it down the highway myself. It is wider than street legal, which means that I require a wide load permit, not guide cars, but I do require a wide load permit in order to move it. What does that equate to in square footage? Well, I've written it down because I never remember. The house on the main part is 305 square feet. And the loft above the kitchen here is 95 square feet for a total of 390 square feet. <laughs> yes, I'm a financial planner. I do math. Before anybody reminds me in the comments that 
it's not really tiny yep i know doesn't bother me a bit um, i'm not trying to compete for the smallest space i can live in i just wanted a nice comfortable house that had everything that i needed i don't actually use the loft and i'm glad it's there because it gives me options for if i need a guest bedroom or you know extra storage i have it so yeah the house is 37 feet long nine and a half feet wide and 390 square feet total on the inside next question does my tiny house shake when i use my washer dryer combo unit if you don't know i have a washer dryer combo unit um, in the bathroom it works really well for what it does it doesn't um, do very big loads and it washes a load that's bigger than it dries for my big laundry needs i go to the laundromat here in the neighborhood but i do use my washer and dryer combo unit for small loads and when the weather's really bad or at the beginning of corona geddon when everything was closed i was really glad to have it but when it hits the spin cycle it does shake the house a little bit i think i would be able to feel it even if i was in a foundation house right if you're sitting right beside the washer and really in a tiny house you're always right beside everything you're going to feel the vibration a little bit when it does its spin cycle and my office space right here is basically across the hall from the bathroom where the wash dryer combo unit is i do hear it i do feel it vibrate but it's really not a big deal sweet potato keep in mind that i have my house blocked up one of the requirements to park here in the mobile home park that i'm parked in was to have the tires off not the axles but just the tires off so that it's off its tires the tires are slid under the trailer on um, some plywood so and behind the skirting so they're nice and protected and because it's blocked up it's really 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 solid i think if it was still on its tires and just the jacks were down i would feel the motion of the spin cycle a lot more but as it is right now i don't feel it a whole lot it doesn't rattle things around or anything like that i am in the process of filming a review on my washer dryer combo unit because now i've been here over a year and i've been using it for that length of time and i thought that those of you that are trying to decide if you want to put a combo unit in your tiny house or separate washer dryer units you might find it useful to have somebody review one and share the learnings that i've had in this almost year and a half of using it another question i had which kind of surprised me but i think i know where it's coming from was uh, do i have a problem with bugs coming in through gaps in the door or you know openings in in the shell of the house and i at first thought what a horrifying question because <laughs> i don't like bugs i did see a video i think it was tiny dreamer uh, she's got a, a youtube channel and she had a video where she talked about her problem with bugs getting in and uh, spiders and things like that so i could see where the question is coming from now she lives in a very different climate than i i do i live in calgary alberta canada um, we have bugs don't get me wrong but they're probably not the great big bugs that people who live in much more humid climates have and warmer climates so when i move to vancouver island this might become more of an issue but as it stands right now uh no i <laughs> I've had one spider, one, thank goodness. When my youngest kid was home, <laughs> they were my favorite because they would get the bugs out of the house for me. And now I have to be a grown up and take care of them myself. I don't have a lot of openings in the house. The door seals really well. The vents for the hood fan and the bathroom vent. I suppose that's one area mm -hmm. where the bugs could get in. It's my understanding that there's a screen behind the little cover. Certainly when I move to a more humid climate, when I move to British Columbia, I'm going to look into that, see if maybe we need to build a little cover that's a mesh to keep the bugs out. The only other place that I could think that they might come in, because underneath the trailer is sheathed, is the water line into the bathroom. I'll be vigilant about that when the time comes, but right now it's not a problem. Um, believe me, if I had the problem she had with the size of spiders she showed, no, I don't, I, I just know. Next question. Do I have plans, blueprints of my tiny house 
for sale. No, I had in my mind exactly what I wanted. I worked with a professional builder and I used her building expertise to fine tune my design and, and what I wanted. We did a little tweaking about where the office would go and I certainly relied on her expertise and her eye for design. Now that I've built through my builder, she now has this basic floor plan on her website. And if you go to Teacup Tiny Homes website, you will see the serendipity model there. So yeah, check out their, their website and really any professional builder that you're considering should have floor plans on their websites that you can look at and see if you can use them as a starting point for the design that you want to do. Another question that I got was, if I had to do it over again, what would I do differently? There's a couple of things that I would, I think, change. One of which is, hold on a sec, I'm making a mess, behind the camera, this space on the kitchen counter behind the stove. I do have a, st a stool there, but the countertop doesn't stick out and so you can't tuck your knees in underneath there. Now I didn't extend that on purpose. I didn't want to have anything taking up room in the living room and making it feel smaller. If I was doing it again I would definitely add um, a, a little overhang that flipped down when it wasn't in use. When you're working in the kitchen people always want to be in the kitchen and I don't actually like people sitting there while I'm cooking. They're in my space. And so I would much prefer if people wanted to chat and be, you know, part of what's going on in the kitchen while I'm cooking. I wish that they could sit there. And they do. They do. It's just um, not as comfortable as it could be. So that's one of the things that I would definitely change. And then the other one is Thai red curry. When we design the house, the cat litter box is going to be in the bathroom and in the space where the hot water tank is now, I was going to have propane appliances. And when I found this parking spot and the house was already well on its way being built, I was told that you weren't allowed propane appliances inside the park here in the city. Wasn't a problem for my stove, wasn't a problem for my furnace to switch them to natural gas because it was just a changing the fitting on the end of the hose. So I couldn't do that with my tankless hot water heater. That meant that I had to find another option. I couldn't find an electric one that would work on the amperage of the house. So the space that was gonna be for the cat litter box tucked away in the bathroom then had to be used for a 60 gallon hot water tank. I'm grateful that I found this out before the house was delivered to the park and then found out after everything was finished. But it ended up costing me a bit to have things replumbed. Um, I think it was almost $1,500 to have it replumbed, which was an ouch in my mind. I never thought to ask that question. And if you're planning on building a house that you want to park in a municipality, inside city limits in particular, that could be an issue. The mobile home park here, that was something that they don't allow. They don't allow propane appliances inside the unit. The nice thing about the stove and the furnace is, again, it was just, just changing that fitting on the end of the hose. So it's easy to switch back. Yeah, that's, that's really it. Everything else works super well. Okay, the next question is, what about plumbing and sewer pipes in the winter? Like, are there special considerations for it in the winter? Yeah, absolutely. You're going to want to be sure that you are heat taping your plumbing pipes. Make sure that any pipes that are on an exterior facing wall, that there's good insulation behind them so that you don't have any pipes freezing. And if you live in a cold climate, you already know that. I'm not an expert. Make sure you talk to an expert. <laughs> your, your plumber, gas fitter definitely should know what they're doing. I mean, we get some really cold temperatures here in Canada. There's a lot of places across the world that do and not having your pipes insulated and heat wrapped, especially if they're outside. If you're parking in a RV park, your plumbing, you'll, your line for your water will be above ground. So it's even more important to make sure that that's insulated and wrapped with heat trace tape. I think that's the name. If you're off grid and you're going to have a hot uh, water tank, um, make sure that that's either inside the house so it's warm. But if it's underneath the trailer, I would also recommend that that be wrapped and heated somehow. Um, 
not an expert, not sure how that's done, but I know that that is done. Okay, last question. Now just one can of coconut milk, uh, full fat. None of this watery stuff. What cat litter do I use for Sophie, my big tiny house cat? So I tried a couple of litters. The first one I tried was corn cob. Uh, and I thought that was brilliant, right? I mean, it's, it's a product that goes to waste if it doesn't get used. It's environmentally friendly. Um, and it worked well as far as smell went. But what I found was it didn't clump very well. It was clumping litter, but it didn't clump very well. So then I found this litter that is walnut shells. And the brand is called Naturally Fresh, 100% natural walnut shells. It's quick clumping and it really is. It's amazing and it has virtually no smell. And in a small space like this, that's really important, especially since her litter box is under my desk <laughs> and I'll be sitting there working and she will come and do her business. I clean her litter box every morning after she's eaten and gone. If you're trying to find litter that um, works well in a small space that doesn't kick up a bunch of dust. It doesn't scratch the floor if you happen to walk on it. It doesn't scratch. It's not dusty. There's no smell. It clumps really well. So I can't recommend it enough. That is pretty much all the questions that I had this time around. Let me know if you like this format of me doing cooking and talking. <laughs> I don't know why you'd like that, but you know, I'm making a video. I might as well be doing something while I'm making the video. And the kids will want something to eat. If you're wondering what I put the soup on, I put it on high pressure for 10 minutes. And then you let it do its thing. Once it's cooked, I'll do the quick release. And then I'll let it cool for a bit and put it through the blender. I hope everybody's doing well. Staying safe. Let me know if you have any other questions that you'd like me to answer in future videos, maybe uh, give them a little hashtag Q&A so that I can spot them easily. Thanks for watching. If you're a new subscriber, thanks for joining and I will talk to you next week. Oh, this is gonna be so annoying. I feel like I'm wearing a leash.